Hello and welcome to A Slice of Life Hour with me, Eugene Lowe. For your dose of do-it-yourself motivation, at only 26 years old, Marcus Ho is a highly sought-after social media strategist who specializes in increasing sales and customer loyalty through social media. Well known for his cutting-edge, fresh insights and proven strategies, Marcus has successfully helped over 200 corporations and SMEs to rake in hundreds of thousands within very short periods of time. He has also uh, just released released a book called Social Payoff, Measurable and Cutting-Edge Strategies to Boost Sales, Customer Loyalty and Brand Dominance Through Social Media, published by Right Editions. And uh, we have him with me in the studio to talk more about uh, taking the less conventional path and, uh, you know, perhaps uh, some uh, ideas on how you can also do something like that, something that's more, um, you know, customized to your own unique strengths. Hi, Marcus. Welcome into 938 Live. Thanks, Eugene. Thanks for having me on this show. All right. Let's start at the very beginning or close to the beginning, uh, rather. How did someone like you come to do what you do? What was the environment like when you were growing up? Were your caregivers' attitudes towards, uh, what were the attitudes towards bringing you up? Uh, I think while well, growing up, it was a very interesting uh, time because I came from a pretty humble uh, family background and um, my dad was very, very hardworking. Um, he had a job as a supervisor technician and um, when growing up, I noticed I get a lot of my work ethics and work values from my parents, of course, and I see that my dad is always like someone's always very, very hardworking. So while growing up, um, I've learned or at least I've inculcated that uh, it's one of the values that I should be having. And I think uh, moving on, it has always been part of me, or at least I like to see it that way. Okay. Um, yeah. Where do you think you got your, you know, your gung ho spirit, you know, your 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 uh, an attitude towards striking out on your own? Where do you think think you got that from? I think it was from my dad or so. Yeah. Um, my dad is somebody. So you were born with it. Uh, <laughs> Not the environment or you know bringing up uh, upbringing so much. Probably it was both uh, the environment and the upbringing, uh, I would say, um, because my dad was working for other people um, and he was very, very hardworking. But there was one particular occasion which uh, when I was, I think, primary three, I was maybe about 10 years old, um, it happened on the day which uh, Hong Kong got uh, separated from the UK. Uh, I think it's 1st June 1997. Uh, that was the same day that um, my dad lost one of his uh, jobs that he was working in. And it kind of taught me the lesson that actually to to rely on somebody else um, for your income or for your future is something which is very dangerous. And um, it's not that it's, it's, it's not good or it's not bad, but... I see it as like going through that incident mm. was like a learning lesson that I've learned that wow, I, I should really be the one that is controlling my own future and uh, planning my own life. And I I mean, my life isn't in the hands of somebody else, it's only in mine. So that's where I've learned, okay, uh, I need to make my own decisions and I need to have like my own control over my, my destiny. And I think that was where the gung-ho spirit came from. Okay, and so so that's that's when you got that sense of how important it was to be self reliant, yes. and to perhaps uh, hone your own person, your own skills, as opposed to relying on external factors. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what what sort of uh, you know formal education did you have? I mean, now you're a social media strategist. Yeah. But what did you study in school? You know, I mean, <laughs> presumably you 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 weren't always uh, you you didn't always have a vision of becoming. No, what I didn't. You're doing today. It all happened. By, by chance actually uh, one thing led to it another um, I started off when I was 16 I played a lot of video games you know, I love to play video games so uh, so much that you know when it came to after getting my O-level results um, I didn't do very well <laughs> but I had the choice of what did I want to do so I thought maybe because I like to play games so much uh, why not I will make games so I've, I've enrolled myself in a diploma in information technology, uh, specialized in games development in Singapore Poly. And it was a very interesting story, um, actually, that on the first day of school, 
um, I didn't enjoy a single thing of, of programming, uh, contrary to actually me thinking that I will enjoy playing video games, but making video games was another thing right. uh, altogether. <laughs> All right. So, the, so you enjoy the, the end product. Yes, I enjoyed the, the actual product. programming or something that you found. Oops, what did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, I still pulled through yeah. um, nonetheless because I thought maybe there would be some skills that would be useful for the future. And, you know, we, we all don't know what our future is going to be. So I thought, yeah, um, I just continued doing what I was doing. But there was one opportunity which really shaped the rest of my professional life, and that was during the internship period, um, during the poly days. And I had the chance of choosing where I could intern in. And because I love playing games so much, uh, I was almost like a, a, like really a competitive gamer, professional gamer, some may call it. And then I decided, okay, why not I'll just be an intern at a professional gaming company. But this time around, at first I asked my, my school director, I said, look, I re- I'm already like playing games competitively. Why not? That would be my internship. And the school director looked at me in the eyes and said, what are you trying to do over here? <laughs> so he said, you need to pick something which is more like... Uh, you need to have an employable skill uh, in future. And obviously playing games was not really an employable skill. So I said, okay, why not? I will just uh, create content um, for the professional gaming um, company, the team. So I did that. I took a six-month internship in Beijing, China. And um, it was very interesting. That's where I've also learned better how to live more independently. Um, And that was where I stumbled upon journalism uh, and the the power of the internet, really. And then uh, soon after, I went into the army after that. And then I decided I want to do something with the internet um, because I've experienced like with the internet, there it changes so many different things. Mm, okay, we'll uh, get to more from you about how uh, the internet uh, also changed your life and how you got to be a, a social media strategist today. I'm chatting with uh, Marcus Ho. He is a highly sought after social media strategist who specializes in increasing sales and customer loyalty through social media. He's also written a book called Social Payoff, uh, Measurable and Cutting Edge Strategies to Boost Sales customer loyalty and brand dominance through social media published by Right Editions. More uh, information over at writeditions.com. You can also check out what Marcus does over at socialmetric.com. More in just a while. And we're back on a slice of life uh, to chat with Marcus Ho, who is a highly sought after social media strategist who specializes in increasing sales and customer loyalty through social media. Well known for his cutting edge of fresh insights and proven strategies, Marcus has successfully helped over 200 corporations and SMEs to rake in hundreds of thousands within very short periods of time. And uh, his clients include Qatar Airways, 3M, Homefix, Scantique, and Singapore management university he's also written the book social payoff measurable and cutting edge strategies to boost sales customer loyalty and brand dominance through social media published by right editions but he isn't in to talk about his book i believe he has talked about his book quite a bit elsewhere even here on 93 live as well so let's talk about marcus the person um Earlier on, you you ended off by saying that, you know, that was a period of time where when you got, uh, in a way, you know, found out um, about the the, the endless possibilities and potential of the internet, in particular social media uh, these days. And, you know, I know most of us are on social media on some basic level, but uh, you're a social media strategist, right? So (laughs) where did you get beyond just basic yeah, so that was when I was still in the army and I started my very first business, uh, techzone.sg and I was selling Apple accessories like your iPhone covers, your MacBook casings and all that. And I started that business with only one vision in mind that was to make money, that was to make sales. And uh, this was in early 2008, 2009 period. Facebook was just starting to get hot uh, in Singapore in terms of its user database. So I thought maybe I'll just take advantage of this platform and see whether or not it would drive sales for me. 
And um, I did a lot of different things. Like I went into Facebook groups. I did a little advertising here and there, but I didn't get much um, sales. And it got so frustrating to one point that I almost wanted to give up. Um, I remember having dinner with my dad also, and he asked me like, "Hey, Marcus, how is your business?" And I, I said, uh, it's not going very well. In fact, there's some days there were no sales at all. Okay. So it was very hard to sustain. Um, and then he did said, you did you ever? Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, he said and, something. And then he yeah. said, like, if if there's no sales, why not you just do something else? Yeah. Don't be a loser. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that's very encouraging. But but it he he knew how to say things to me that would get me even more motivated why, why didn't you i mean presumably you, you you never you know got into a you know for lack of a better word proper job yeah why didn't you i mean you had that diploma in yeah. in it and and then you 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 interned at a you know gaming technology firm yeah. so why didn't you do just that i mean that was the simple way to go um primarily because after during the army uh as most guys can relate you start pondering and you start reflecting what you would really want to do with your life you will start planning for your future and i was applying to a lot of universities so because we, we we i was planning like the usual route and um i was thinking what if i were just to do something different from everybody else um what if i would just try and start my own business so that was where i just made a decision i told my family that i was going to put university on, uh, studies on hold for like a year and um, see where this adventure takes me uh, to after one year time. Okay. So that was where the idea started. And then I went to a lot of uh, seminars and one very inspiring person um, that I've learned from a lot is our local uh, celebrity guy, um, Adam Koo. Um, um, I went to one of his seminars and I got very, very inspired that um, motivated me to just go and start TechZone.SG um, after that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, most people out of, straight out of school will be uh, focused more on that very first paycheck, you know. And the, yes, yes. And it's, uh, you, you, did you think you would make, presumably you thought you would make money, you know, with this with this. Yeah, uh, I, I, I had some yeah. like uh, part-time jobs once in a while um, during my earlier poly days, but it wasn't, it, it didn't go so well. Like it's either I wanted to change something or I wanted to just... Um, take over some of what my bosses would do back then. So I'm not a very good employee in that sense. Like, I'm a rebel at heart. <laughs> okay. So you already knew that you probably wouldn't do so well under somebody's thumb, right? Uh, we'll continue to chat with Marcus Ho, who is a highly sought-after social media strategist who specializes in increasing sales and customer loyalty through social media, also author of Social Payoff, published by Right Editions. More information at writeditions.com or socialmetric.com. Uh, do stay with me after Headline News Sports and Business. We'll get back with uh, Marcus and chat about uh, you know his uh, uh, career in social media and what sort of challenges uh, that he faced as well and how he honed his skills and craft also all the happening here on 938 live You're listening to a Slice of Life Hour with me, Eugene Lowe, for your dose of do-it-yourself motivation. And today, we're uh, getting Marcus Ho to share his motivational strategies uh, with us. At only 26 years old, he is a highly sought-after social media strategist who specializes in increasing sales and customer loyalty through social media. He is well-known for his cutting-edge, fresh insights and proven strategies. Marcus has successfully helped over 200 corporations and SMEs to raise in hundreds of thousands within very short periods of time. We're all very impatient these days, I suppose. And some of his clients include Qatar Airways, 3M, uh, Pernod Ricard, Dassault Systems, Freshcon, Homefix, Scanty, and Singapore Management University. And he's also written a book all about uh, social payoff for measurable and cutting-edge strategies to boost sales, customer loyalty, and brand dominance through social media, published by Right Editions. Now, 
we're finding out more about the man behind the book and also behind uh, that uh, supposed that veneer of being a highly sought after social media strategist. Uh, uh, of course, you are very successful, but um, you know what? T- share with us some of uh, the initial hard knocks that you you know experienced before you got to this stage. Um, what were some of the challenges you faced? One of the challenges, biggest challenge, stumbling stumbling blocks, I would say. Um, was that uh, this I think most recent one was last year because we were planning like the direction of my agency uh, social metric and that's like our bread and butter business and we were thinking because we've been doing okay but we want to grow fast and we really want to make an impact so I stumbled upon like many different quotes Uh, I think Zig Ziglar has once said that uh, you can have everything you want in life as long as you help others get what they want first. Um, he said something along to that extent, and and then I thought and I talked to my business partner Clement. I said, "What should we do? Like, I mean, we obviously both really want to build something that could make an impact over here." So we sat down with a lot of different people. Um, they all asked us like very very deep questions of why do you do what you do. Um, we watch a lot of videos on YouTube. We ask ourselves very deep questions, and we will still, I would say, um, not very sure how we wanted to grow the business because at the end of the day, it, it depends on the founders um, where they wanted to to drive the the business to. And after a long, long time, uh, very, very intensive discussion, we decided, okay, we both know that we want to make an impact. Why not let's have a big, hairy, audacious goal um, to build like 10,000 successful business case studies from social media by year by the year 2023. So that was 10 years time when we sat down last year. So we said, okay, we, 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 we wrote this in front of us and then we asked ourselves, will this stick with us? Like, is this something that we would drive for? And after, after quite a while, we, we looked back at it and we said, yes. That is what um, resonates with us, and that is what resonates with every single person of our team. Mm. And then uh, in our office, we've we've got like stickers put up on that on our wall with a counter that actually <laughs> measure that. So we we are accountable every single day of all the the success, the clients, the people that we work with. And um, it's it's very validating for the work that we do. Um, just last week, um, because we also do workshops, uh, social media workshops, where we share our same techniques and our strategies. And just last week, uh, one of our our students who who attended our workshop uh, sent me a message the other day, and he said, "Marcus, your stuff really works. Like your techniques, your strategies on social media really works." I said, "Oh, that's interesting. Tell me more." And he said, "He's he's in the IT business, and he struggles to always get new leads." Um, because you know IT firm is very competitive uh, industry these days, and he said through your techniques and your strategies, applying it on Facebook, um, he's gotten like two hundred over leads within a very short uh, period of time. I think it was like three weeks, and um, he converted to sales after that, and he netted about two hundred more than two hundred fifty k worth of sales. And I was like, wow! It just made all the hard work preparing for for the workshop. Um, preparing the content, sharing all the, all the hard work and sacrifice just made it so worth it just to hear one simple success story of somebody generating a quarter million directly from Facebook. Um, it yeah. seems to me that, you know, regardless of, you know, the sector or arena that you might be working or playing in, mm-hmm. it all comes down to building relationships, isn't it? Yes. You know, even though you are really working via machines, at the other end is a human being. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and really it's, it's down to, um, f- you know, forging a relationship that both of you can uh, benefit from. Exactly. That is the key to it. Nowadays, you don't just uh, make people spend money and then you get my product. That's, that's, uh, that's all you get, right? No, you have I, to I think that's why um, every person is in business in, in any way. Like, uh, we believe that we've got something to share with the world, whether it's a product or a service. And um, we want to help other people. And that's why um, we do what we do. And it, that's why it strives us to doing what we do. And uh, personally, for me, that vision sticks very well. And um, we just really want to build something that's impactful. 
And of um, course, you have that, that ambitious goal 2023. Yes, to by 2023, yeah. But how important is having those goals? I mean, that's a huge one. Yeah. Do you have other smaller goals that you constantly aspire to? And is that what keeps you going? Uh, smaller goals, I think more on a personal level. Um, because I think... Um, this at 26 to, to 35 years old is the age where you really hustle a lot and um, I think this is a time where you know you want to think of settling down uh, starting a family and all these things so um, these are like more immediate and more personal goals that I'm striving for but I'm never losing sight from the 10,000 uh, successful business case studies uh, and this could not just necessarily be applied in business. Mm. Uh, it can be also be applied on personal uh, level as well on a professional level. Um, just the other day, somebody wrote me an email and said, "Marcus, I've used your techniques not on a business level." And then I replied, "What do you use it for? Like, I hope you're using it for some uh, something that's legal, ethical, and morally right." Mm. He said, "Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm using it for uh, to get a new job, and it works for me." Right. Okay. So I think all these things, um, yeah, all these success stories really just make all the sacrifice of, of everything that, that I gave up for just so worth it at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. What, about, what about faith in yourself? How important has self-belief been for you on your journey? <laughs> um, I would say extremely important. Um, there are a lot of times where I still doubt um, um, myself like once in a while. Um, because you you know you you stumble upon challenges which and and life just has a very very unique way of uh, giving you challenges after challenge and each challenge just seems to be bigger and the, sometimes the challenge becomes so big that um, you you just doubt yourself whether or not you can accomplish it but uh, during this time you just tell yourself uh, like what Rocky would say to his kid that uh, you know life isn't a uh, um, the world isn't like uh, full of sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. So I, I always remember um, from that quote from that movie, and it doesn't matter like how tough you are. Like champions don't win based on how hard they hit, but how hard they can get hit and keep moving forward. And every time I'm down, every time I I doubt myself, I just remind myself of that. And all the previous challenges, uh, which I've also once in a while doubted myself, but just thought to myself, yeah, I'll just continue, keep moving on and see where it takes me. Ultimately, after a couple, like give, give yourself time, I gave myself time and um, things would come to fruition. And then you see the results that you want to see and then it becomes very validating for what you what you want to achieve. This can be not just within a monetary sense, but it can be something else as well. Yep. In a way, uh, challenges are to be expected in life. Yeah. I mean, and and no, no matter how much you've gone through, you can be sure there will be more you know, yeah. on the way. Yeah. So uh, it really takes that sort of a mental courage to say, okay, this is bound to happen, uh, but let me try and get through it. And, you know, um, as you persevere and go on, things do get better. Yeah, and it does. Um, yeah, so it's even it's, it's funny, like some... Every time you look back and you 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 reflect on yourself and you think, I used to doubt myself, but that was such a small challenge back then, and then now you're going through a bigger one, and then, it's it's I think life is very interesting in that way. Like it always gives you bigger challenges after bigger challenges, but in that sense, it's also fun in a way because without challenges, what would, what would we all have to strive for? Yeah. Yeah, so you find it exciting and colorful. Pretty much, yes. And uh, <laughs> we'll see where where um, everything goes from here. Yeah. And uh, who knows, in about nine years from now, will the 10,000 successful business case studies come true? We'll have to see. Right. All yeah. right. Uh, all the best to you then. 
Thank you. For Goal 2023. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Marcus, for coming in today. My guest, uh, Marcus Ho, a highly sought after social media strategist who specializes in increasing sales and customer loyalty through social media. Uh, he has successfully helped over 200 corporations and SMEs to rake in hundreds of thousands within a very short time. And, uh, you know, you can find out more about uh, more information on Marcus and his cutting edge strategies at socialmetric.com. You can and also pick up a copy of his book, uh, Social Payoff, Measurable and Cutting Edge Strategies to Boost Sales, Customer Loyalty and Brand Dominance Through Social Media. That's published by Write Editions. That's right as in uh, W-R-I-T-E. More information at writeeditions.com. Social Payoff by Marcus Ho is available at all major bookstores. And if you have something to share with me as well on the show, a message or messages to help us all live a happier and more successful life to get in touch with me uh, via email it's eugene at mediacorp.com.sg i'm eugene low and this has been a slice of life r thank you very much for joining me here on 938 live